This video will teach you how some exceptionally beautiful math keeps the data that you send over the internet safe from cyber criminals, hackers, and other prying eyes. Specifically, we're going to talk about the RSA crypto system, a method for encrypting your messages so that nobody can read them except for the people with whom you intended to communicate. RSA is somewhat complex, so before we get into it, I wanted to give you a preview of the cool stuff that we'll get to later in the video. I'm going to show you how RSA exploits gorgeous mathematical patterns, like those shown here, to encode your messages so that only the right people can read them. The secret message that you want to encrypt is probably written in some human language, but RSA only works on numbers, so you'll need to convert the message to a set of numbers somehow. There are various standards called encodings for doing this, but to keep things simple, we'll just start by working with a single number directly. We need to build a scrambler device that will take a message and turn it into some unrecognizable output. We're going to build this scrambler device out of math. We'll start by taking an n-digit section of the number line and rolling it up into a circle. This circle will be our scrambler. It implements a mathematical system called modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is exactly like regular arithmetic, except that we wrap around when we run out of numbers on the circle. So for example, adding four to nine gives you three, not 13. Multiplying eight by two gives you six, not 16. We can change the value of n, which we will call our modulus, to make whatever size of circle we need to implement the particular kind of modular arithmetic we'll use to run RSA. Modular arithmetic may seem like much ado about nothing, but it has a tremendous degree of intricate complexity hidden in its simple circular structure. To see why, let's draw a line between every value around our circle and the result that you get when multiplying that value by two. In modulo 20, meaning the numbers around our circle go from zero to 19, the pattern doesn't really look like anything. But if we increase the modulus, say to 50, we start to see a beautiful curve emerge. It's called a cardioid due to the heart shape. And as we increase n further, we can see that this curve becomes even more well-defined. What if we multiply the values around our circle by a different number? As we can increase m, our multiplication table number, you can see that we get more and more intricate shapes. Check out the Mathologer video in the description for a great in-depth discussion of this phenomenon. Their video was my main inspiration in making this video, actually. So multiplying by even higher values gives you all these really interesting shapes, but they're more than just pretty, they're also useful, and they are the engine that powers RSA encryption. It turns out that by moving along these curves, we can scramble data in such a way that not only is it safe from hackers when we send it over the internet, but the people with whom we are communicating can unscramble it when needed. Now we're going to work through encrypting a specific value with RSA. We'll start with the specially chosen modulus value of 187. We'll explain why we chose that value a little bit later. To encrypt a message, we start with the number on the circle corresponding to the text in our message. We'll just choose nine in this case as an example. The number nine isn't just the message itself. It also defines the set of multiplication lines that we're going to follow in order to encrypt our message. Let's look at the m equals nine multiplication graph now. Remember, if we start somewhere on the circle and then follow one of these lines, that corresponds to multiplying our original value by nine. We're going to start at nine, and then we're going to multiply nine by itself a very specific number of times. In other words, we choose a specific exponent, which we will call e, and we raise nine to that power. Every time we multiply by nine, we move along the appropriate modular multiplication line. We're now going to move step-by-step step along the circle following the lattice of lines. And at the end of this process, the number we end up with is called the ciphertext, the encrypted version of our message. You can see that we ultimately get a value of 70 for our ciphertext. 
but we aren't done yet. Right now, we have a lock, but we don't have the key to go with it. How does the intended recipient of our message decrypt the ciphertext to get back the original message? It turns out they just need to multiply the ciphertext value C by itself a different number of times. In other words, we choose a new exponent, which we'll call D. In this case, we need a D value of 23. The process of multiplying C by itself D times will bounce us all around the circle. But finally, as if by magic, the original message will pop out at the end. The circle itself is the source of the magic here. We set up this magic circle by choosing the right number n. Once we've got this value for n, we can figure out e and d using the math that I'll talk about in the next video in this series on RSA.